Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and if you are one of my residents, you already know that, and if you're watching this on YouTube, well, you may already know that also, but we're gonna do some cases today, just some random derm path fun for uh, Friday afternoon. So here's, uh, here's case one. What have we here? Wow, that's a beaut. Anyone recognize that? Scabies is a thought. Myiasis is a thought. And tongueiasis is a thought. Good. Well, you know, you guys all recognize three arthropod organisms that would potentially live um, in this part of the skin. Scabies would be in the corneal layer. Myiasis is down in the dermis as kind of a nodule, and that's, that's bot fly, basically. And uh, Dr. Moore said this is something she would not want on her, and I agree completely. I'd like to have no arthropods um, burrowed in my skin, thank you. But boy, they sure are beautiful uh, when we get to see them. So um, this, is, uh, this is the only case I've ever seen of this, and I'll tell you a story behind it. I was a, I was a fellow, and someone uh, put this case in my, my mailbox, and I, to this day, do not know who gave it to me. It was an old recut from like decades ago, and um, I never was able to find out who gave it to me. Someone recut one and put it with my name on it in a box. And so whoever you are, mystery pathologist out there, I love you dearly because you gave me the best tongueiasis and the only tongueiasis I've ever, ever seen. Because we don't really have this, to my knowledge, in the United States. Um, if any of you know differently, let me know. But mainly this is, um, this is uh, basically something that uh, is in um, Central and South America. Also, I think some in Africa and India. Um, and this case, you can see here that to orient yourself, this is the, the normal epidermis here. And look, the epidermis goes down here underneath this thing. So this whole huge flea, it's a, basically a sand flea, tunga penetrans, sand flea, chigo flea is the other name, and jigger flea. Um, the, I didn't make these names up. That's what, those are the different names for them uh, colloquially, depending on where you're from in the world. They live in the sand and burrow into the underneath the stratum corneum and you can see over time the skin is basically it's still mostly intact there's a little ulceration here tons of inflammation underneath but this is technically outside of the the skin it's above the epidermis but down below the corneal layer so it's basically expanded as it's grown and made this burrow yuck right and basically the flea burrows under there and it leaves a little hole in the stratum corneum and through that it can defecate and also lay eggs delightful huh and then eventually it dies and then the 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 flea goes away so like other arthropods, um, the uh, scabies mite would have this similar pattern, but it would be much smaller. And sometimes it's hard to, to conceptualize that. So you realize this is a big piece of tissue down to the subcutis. And this thing is basically the size of a, you know, most, it's about half the tissue it's taken up. Uh, a scabies mite would be about this size, about the size of the, era, the area I'm circling there. It would be a small little thing, but, but otherwise would look similar. Like all arthropods, basically, what you get is this chitinous shell around the outside. Sometimes the chitin has a pink color. Other times it has this bright yellowish color, and it's kind of refractile. I can't really show you the refractileness because it's a scan slide. It's one of the trade-off scan slides. You can't really flip that condenser and get the, the refractile uh, nature of things. But uh, in any case, oh, hold on a second. In any case, that's uh, that's chitin sometimes has that yellow look. Other times I feel like it looks pink. And chitin is like a carbohydrate, basically. It's a, that's my understanding of it. I'm not a biochemist, but a carbohydrate that forms the firm's, um, the firm uh, um, outer exoskeleton of, um, of arthropods. And sometimes, let's see if it shows it here. I've seen it before, like on ticks, for example. Uh, yeah. If you look close, you can see like these little spiky ridge pattern or kind of grooves. It depends on how it's cut. And then inside, you have some of these are probably internal organs. Some are probably eggs. I really have no idea. I'm not a, uh, I, my microscopic anatomy knowledge stops at humans. I, I've always looked with wonder at all the little parts inside arthropods, but I really don't know what all of them are. So if you're out there and you're an expert on um, tonga or arthropod microscopic anatomy and you're watching this on YouTube, I would love to learn. So please teach me what all these little circles and, and cool things are. But in any case, in rec you need to recognize that this is, is chitinous exoskeleton material and that you're dealing with arthropod. That's the first step because that can help you with, like, uh, like you guys suggested, finding scabies, myiasis, bot fly, anytime there's gonna be some arthropod um, organism. And we say arthropod because remember that encompasses insects and also um, arachnids and other things that might be in the skin. 
So uh, this is the, the burrowed tunga, the mama sand flea here burrowed in um, into its home in someone's unfortunate foot. And you know, the dermis, as you can imagine, is none too happy with having this thing over top. Bajillion eosinophils down in here. And uh, for your viewing pleasure, I pulled up some uh, images here from Wikimedia. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put links down below um, so you can see the sources of these and you can go view them for yourself. 